here is. You like your little cat house kitty? Yeah, you good, good, good kitty. Well, how you doing today? Yeah. Just all cozy in there. All right, we're dealing with 90 degrees Fahrenheit at the present moment. 4,450 miles on that odometer. It's a Wednesday, October 9th, 2024. Welcome to the vlog. Please subscribe show. We're in Texas, Fort Worth, Texas. Got a lot of news on Milton the hurricane, one of the largest hurricanes of the century, according to the news, and a lot of people. I think it's gone down from a category five to a category maybe three or something like that um, to a category four and then back to a category five. But it's what, it, what it's doing is it's it's losing its power as it's approaching Florida. And then once it hits landfall, it can go down to anywhere between a category three to category two. But there's different stories and different stuff that's going on. So it might be even a category four. This could be a pretty big one is what they're saying. But we'll find out tonight, probably between midnight to 3 a.m., the devastation. But the vloggers that I watch, uh, Tampa Jays in San Antonio and Chris the Girls in Pennsylvania. But Adam the Woo stuck it out coming up to the butterfly. Supposedly, at least right now, he's in celebration to what we know. At least he left. Don't know. But some people are hunkering down, as Steve Wallace says, which you don't want to be in a tent right now. Steve Wallace does a lot of stealth camping. You'd want to be in probably a concrete structure, something that has maybe six feet uh, of concrete on, on the walls or something. You'd want to be in a nice, a nice structure. Um, there's a lot of activity. Multiple tornadoes have already hit all different parts of Florida, south to the, uh, to the, the center of, of Florida. But uh, I think Adam the Woo is one I watch. He's uh, right there below Orlando in a place called Celebration, which is too far from Disney World. They're closing the parks early today. Um, if you're at Walt Disney World, they'll be closing the parks early. And they're tying down like every chair and everything, every store's putting boards up. And I remember going through a hurricane when I was younger. Uh, I don't, I think it was either Florida or, or it was Texas. My mom would take us to Florida sometimes and we had come across a hurricane. I think it was Florida. And, um, we, we found a, uh, a motel. My mom put the dresser in front of the, the door. She scooted the dresser over in front of the door. So I guess the door, so the door wouldn't fly open. It was a long time ago. It was like in the eighties. This was supposed to be a pretty bad one. It turned out it, it wasn't that bad. So we'll have to see. We'll find out and we'll know tomorrow. So these things can change rapidly. But we're, prayers are sent out to them. All right, first one, 524 arrival, 13 minutes, 4.3 miles. And accumulated info from yesterday, 26.7 miles. That's yesterday. And there is the Cybertruck. All right, we're coming up to an F-18 Hornet. It's Blue Angels, U.S. Navy. Got number seven on it. Got a little cat over here. All 
I don't show Skinny Midnight, the cat that visits us, because um, location reasons, but um, Skinny Midnight looks a little bit like that cat, only a little skinnier, and she's got, I think it's, a, we think it's a female, I haven't been able to check, but loose, like a loose belly, where maybe she had kittens or something, and, or maybe it was a fat cat that lost a lot of weight, I don't know. But her belly kind of swings underneath her, kind of like a milk cow. Um, because that's usually a sign that they've had babies. But we're feeding her quite a bit. My mom bought a huge bag of cat food. One cat food. I think it's called one, Purina One. We give Edmund uh, naturals, Purina naturals. But uh, we have... A whole lot of cat food, even cans of cat food. She bought a case of can of fat, uh, cat food um, that we might could give a little bit of that to Skinny Midnight. He, come, he comes back around. She bought it. She wanted to buy a cat house with straw, but we're really not supposed to assemble those things where we live. But they have some areas. There's a, areas of strays um, in our area that there's another complex next door. And there's a lot of bushes and stuff like that. Um, and then there's a dog run. So they have a dog run. But uh, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know if if doing that would be, you know, because we don't we don't have our own house or anything like that. So I don't I don't know. It, it'd be you know we can't just set up a, a cat house on. But. Hopefully she'll find something. I, I would let her in, but Edmund, oh, headlights, yeah, headlights are off. Edmund would um, not like it. They, I don't think they, they, the other day she came up to the door, and, and uh, you know how their hairs, their hairs get all kind of crazy, and Edmund started kind of you know doing the, they get scared. I've had cats do that before, and uh, Edmund is fixed. We don't know if Skinny Midnight's fixed, but we did get Edmund fixed, but I don't know. I'm okay with just one cat right now. Um, there was a time in my first marriage a long, long time ago. This was like in 2000 and maybe five where we had up to 18 cats, um, maybe 20, but we had one stray and then we had a a cat named Honey that spawned at least two or three litters. And um, I don't want to get into the whole thing. That they, They'll multiply like rabbits. But we did get Edmund fixed when, um, when we first got him. So he's, he's a fixed kitty. He's neutered. I don't know if, if she's spayed or not. If um... Oh, this is cool right here. If Skinny Midnight's a spayed. I don't even know if it's a female. Oh wow, Casper. They have uh, several Caspers. Another Casper over that way. So they're doing yard work right now. Oh, they're, yeah, they've got a big tarantula, another Casper. Friendly ghost tarantula. Well, if Daniel Johnston was around, he'd be flipping out. We're over off of Ridge Bar. This is kind of an upper end area. I used to live Caddy Corner over that way in an apartment complex. Uh, for two or three years. It's a pretty nice place. We had, th what, four? I think we had four cats. Squeak died early. He was the runt of the litter. And he, he was born from a Manx. We had a, a Manx, a Tonkinese. A Tonkinese was named Itzy. And then we had um, a Manx, Tonkinese. I believe, yeah, I believe Romeo was just a tuxedo cat. And then he had Mojo, which Mojo was an all black cat with a little, I think he had a little white spot on him. I think he did. He may have been an all black cat. Let's look at photos. Yeah, I think he had a little white spot somewhere on him. I could be wrong about that. I think that whole black cat thing was just something I was doing for fun. Um, but anyway, yeah, they ended up going to Maine with me. I lived in Maine for a year. My cats went with me, my, my two cats, just Romeo and Mojo. Itsy was given away because I ended up getting a divorce a long time ago. It was like 2010-ish, around that time. We were married for about five years. And then she moved on. I haven't talked to her 
long, long time. Hopefully she's okay. All right, I need to focus on this delivery. Ooh, and this one's for sale. Right off Saxony. for sale right now. Kyle Dykes is a realtor. Realtor is at 254371938. So yeah, it looks like it's for sale. And it has showings right there. This is on the road to Saxony. Saxony. 1713 Saxony Road. And the house is for sale. Oh, I got a, a Ghostbuster sign here. Like Persh. Oh, this looks this looks pretty good. So far they're gonna have a setup here. Looks like a skeleton in a Ghostbuster outfit. He's got the little Ghostbuster gun there. There's the, the sign for Ghostbuster. Electroplasma thingy. Don't have all my Ghostbuster terminology down, but I'm still working on it. There's probably books and books and books written about Ghostbusters. People could probably get their MFA and just studying Ghostbusters. selling right there I'll do that every once in a while I mean every house is available to be sold whenever they put it on the market but there are ones that are very evident this is Westover Hills really nice place in Fort Worth but there's you know houses that are very evidently you know advertised as being sold you know it's very clear um, because they have a sign outside um, I did explore real estate um, and possibly th thought about getting a real estate license. Uh, there are some companies that will actually help you get your real estate license and then you can just privately get it. You know, you can just go to an um, online school and, and, and be licensed for real estate. Here's another one for lease though. This is John Zimmerman. That one's for lease right there. Westover Hills, so far there's three of them, so that may be a place if you're into real estate. Probably you'd watch my show if you're into real estate. I know there's, there's the Casper stuff. It's Casper the Friendly Ghost. But um, because of the amount of houses that I show all along the way, um, that I come across, you know, so probably you'd be interested. I do have family that that is... Um, in real estate. I don't know if they still are. I haven't talked to them in a long time, but but I've done, you know, quite well um, in, in real estate. And I've been told to get my real estate license, but I'm not. So I'm not a real estate agent or anything like that. I'm just, I just come across houses um, every day and, and everything like that. But if you do see a house on my show and it does help you and you are a real estate agent, there is a thing called a finder's fee and you don't have to be licensed to get a finder's fee. Um, I don't think so, but if you do, you can let me know that too. But I don't think you have to be, but you can work for a real estate company and help them that way. But you only get like a cut, you know, you don't, you don't get um, a whole lot. Like in real estate, you only have to sell three houses a year usually. That's what I've been told. And you're, you're doing really well if you do that. Some people can get by just selling one, some selling two, but I think as long as you, you sell at least three houses, then you're doing probably somewhere in the six figures. You know, you're doing very well. One, you know, you sell one, you're just barely getting by. It just depends on the house, you know. If you sell a mansion, that could, you know, that could help you for, for many years, you know, um, depending on the real estate company that you, look, you work for and things like that. Look at that one. 
all the coast outside of the Mickey Mouse. So to arrival, five minutes, 1.4 miles. Look at the work going on at the Modern Art Museum. They're doing Sunset Corridor. Jonah Freeman and Justin Lowe at the Darnell uh, Street, I guess. Uh, the Modern Modern Art Museum, sorry. It's off at Darnell Street. going to an arena to drop off this order. There's Casamignana doing Cinderella in October and Tuna Christmas this November. Tuna Christmas. About the third smallest town in the Panhandle, Texas. Population 202. Radio station OKKK coming to you. I don't know, I, I, I haven't seen it in a long time, but it's supposed to be kind of funny. They play like 20 characters. Joe Sears was nominated for a Tony for comedic performance, being, a, being an actor, a comedy. We got something going on around here. That's where the right shirt pickup is. There's a horse and a guy on a scooter. Not exactly a horse, but anyway, this is the Will Rogers Equestrian. So it's where they come to show a lot of horses and horse shows and things like that. Looks like a, someone that works for the media. It's a big old camera with a uh, lens on it. I told her I had a YouTube show, but she's like, no, I work for some other kind of media company or something. I never heard of them. Some group that works with horse shows and, and things like that. I mentioned YouTube to her. And she, I don't know. She was like, I guess, I mean, of course she's heard of YouTube. I was like, yeah, I have a YouTube show. Because I saw her huge um, lens cap on her phone. Not a whole lot, though. A little bit of stuff going on. Some horses, horse shows, and things like that. They always have them coming through here, like almost every day. Some are, you know, larger than the others. Some are smaller. But I guess she's maybe getting photos for the paper. She didn't say Star Telegram or anything, but she mentioned something. She just gave the abbreviations like they usually do. But it wasn't anything that I've heard of. They're probably pretty good. Anyway, this is like Italian food. Off this way. Salads. All right, giant pizza drop, 709 arrival, seven minutes, three miles. Look at all this salad. Well, it looks like all the lights are on, but no go-karts. It's been that way for a while. There's a mini golfer, a couple of them. And then uh, there's a few mini golfers. Family of three, it looks like Rockwood go-karts. Yeah, one night I went by there, I didn't get it, but there was probably like, oh no, I did get that. There was like 12 go-karts going at the same time. Sometimes that place is booming. It's been there since forever. It's been there like since the 50s or something. All right, we're in the Latino Cultural Arts. There's Rose Marine Theater, Artist de la Rosa. I've worked there a few times. 
um, not necessarily connection with nationality as much as theater being its own nationality, welcoming all cultures, the multicultural medium. It used to, it started off right there next to that Mexican food restaurant called Asadero's. I think it was like somewhere, either that one or that one. Anyway, they, they remodeled a lot. I think it was that one. Um, I don't know. I barely can remember. I think it, it had like a little loft. But it was, uh, they moved it across the street into that, into, into that theater, basically. They were called the, um, it was called Le Teatro or something like that. But it was the beginning stages of Rosemarine. And then, uh, Rosemarine has been, actually, it's an antique movie theater. It's a historic movie theater. They turned it into a live theater. We did uh, a few plays there. I did a, I did a couple of them there. View from a bridge and what's something called Blue Street, which is an original work by Adam Dietrich. The other one was directed by um, Adam Adolfo, which is a view from a bridge. We're doing the Spring Hill Suites right now. Pretty big, pretty hefty pizza drop. All right, so we got a big chunk of it delivered. Yeah, they're having some kind of conference meeting or something. It's like six pizzas. Like six pizzas, and then there's like some salads and things out there. Get back. But these are all the salads and plates. Pretty nice lobby too. 